The Lord be with you. This morning, our gospel text is a familiar one. Its popular name is the widow's mite, where the widow puts in two cents, two coins, actually worth less than a cent, into the, the kettle at the temple treasury. And Jesus compliments her, and we'll see what that means for us. I think that's all I have to tell you about uh, today's service. Um, in addition to the prayers was Odella Arnold. She was taken to the hospital yesterday with a problem with her pancreas, so we'll um, keep her in our prayers. Let's prepare our hearts for worship through the brief order of confession and forgiveness found on the third page of your bulletin. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, clothed in majesty ever since the world began, who loves us and frees us from our sins, who leads us with all the saints to everlasting life. Amen. Let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God. God, our Maker and Redeemer, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We come for refuge to your infinite mercy. You have given your only Son to die for us. Have mercy on us, and for his sake forgive us all our sin. By your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and your will, and true obedience to your word, that by your grace we may come to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God has had mercy on us and God's only Son has been given to die for us and for His sake God forgives us all our sin. Believing in Jesus' name you have received power to become the children of God. You have received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's peace by greeting those around you.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord be with you. O oh God, you show forth your almighty power chiefly by reaching out to us in mercy. Grant us the fullness of your grace. Strengthen our trust in your promises and bring all the world to share in the treasures that come through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
as long as life endures. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing grace. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing grace. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine. But God who called me here below will be forever mine. Will be forever mine. You are forever
covenant widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. A reading from Hebrews. Christ did not enter a sanctuary made by human hands, a mere copy of the true one, but he entered into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Nor was it to offer himself again and again as the high priest enters the holy place year after year with blood that is not his own. For then he would have had to suffer again and again since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has ex- appeared, as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the age to die once, and after that, the judgment. So Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 12th chapter. As Jesus taught, he said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearance, say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I would like to invite the young people up. Good morning, how are you today? Did anybody think it was cold this morning? Yeah, we actually have the heat on. Well, we're going to talk about uh, two different kinds of people that Jesus saw in the temple. The temple is sort of like a church, okay? And the scribes, now the scribes were educated people. They could read and write and A vast majority of people in Jesus' day couldn't. They could read and write, and they had money. And it's interesting, they didn't take an offering when you went to the temple. They had a temple treasury, which is often in a room separate, and in it they'd have big pots, and the pots came up with cones, sort of a funnel on the top. And when a wealthy person came by, they would dump a lot of money in, and it was noisy, sort of like this. Okay? So you always knew when someone put a lot of money in. Well, Jesus was sitting in the temple treasury watching Isn't that something? 
He was watching people put money in. And he saw a lot of rich people come and put in a lot of money. Aren't you glad our offering is quieter? And then he saw a widow. And all she had was two coins. They were less, worth less than a penny. And it just went, not much noise at all. But Jesus said, Jesus commented on that widow. And she, he said she was the greatest giver because she gave everything she had. Now, everything she had, those two coins in Jesus' day, might have bought the equivalent of French fries and a small soda. Not much. But Jesus said it was all she gave. Now, why do you think she was so generous? Michaela. She did love God, and she knew that the money would go to good use, either to help poor people or help proclaim God's word. That's a good point. She was able to be generous because she knew something that God would take care of her. Okay? And that's something we should all understand. God will take care of us. So we'll be able to share. I don't know if you had an opportunity to share any of your Halloween candy. Did you share some? It's sometimes hard, but... Yeah, when we know everything is going to be taken care of, that God will take care of us. In your case, God gives you parents and they take care of you. It helps us to be generous. Well, God wants us to be his generous people, okay? Do you know why? He will take care of us. <coughs> Let us pray. Repeat after me. Gracious God. We thank you that you take care of us. Strengthen our faith. Help us to be generous. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can go back to your seats. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Have you uh, ever seen Have you ever seen these letters? Oh, well, we'll start with a joke. Ted says, so what's she supposed to live on if she gives it all away? Rick says, this is one of the generous widows in the Bible. They remind us that our security lies in God's graciousness and not in our stuff. But what if my stuff comes from God, says Ted, instead of where? eBay? Well, sometimes... My jokes are not funny, are they? <laughs> SBNR. Somebody uh, went onto one of these dating services and told me that when it came to the religious definitions, they had SBNR. It means spiritual but not religious. Spiritual but not religious. And studies are out now that have indicated that those people who claim to be spiritual but not religious do not leave, live lives that are any more purposeful, 
fulfilled and happy than those who have no religious affiliation at all. Don't you find that interesting? So that it seems that there's something about being spiritual and religious is good for us. Because studies, other studies have shown now that people who are religious, people who practice their faith by attending worship, by being a part of the community of the faithful, by serving, by giving, by forgiving and being forgiven, people who actually practice their faith and they pray, they have found, studies have shown, that their state of mental health is greater, they have more purposeful lives, more meaningful lives, happier lives. So being spiritual and religious is good for us. Now let's look at our text today. We have two groups of religious people. The first group are the scribes. The scribes are uh, some of the very few people in Jesus' day who had an education, who could read and write. And therefore, they became very valuable people. They would represent widows at the time of... uh, probating their uh, estates. I don't know if they used the word probate back then. And what is Jesus suggesting? That these very religious people seem to be taking advantage of the widows in those situations. And he said, beware of them. They're religious, but they're phony. They're really not practicing their religion in a spiritual way. Jesus says they will receive the worst condemnation. But then he looks at that widow who comes so poor she can only give two copper coins that are worth less than a penny each. Can only give that amount but she gives it all. She was practicing a spirituality that few few of us are able to match. So there's something about being religious and having a religious discipline in our lives that's very good for us. And let's look at a couple of things that the widows knew that this widow knew that we need to know. First off, all that we have, we guard and protect so well, it is not ours. At the men's Bible study a couple weeks ago when the news on bacon came out that it's killing us, one of the Uh, members of that group said, I've had four slices of bacon every morning for years. And then he says, one thing I can assure you, I will die. We all will die. We know that. When I die, I wonder what's going to happen to my picture. <laughs> when this picture actually belonged to Mick's mother. So maybe it's Mick's picture. But when uh, Mick's mother died, Mick got a call, phone call from her brother in law who said, Is there anything of Anne's that you want? And Mick goes, well, I can't think of a thing, anything that I wanted, she already gave me. 
And I go, wait a minute, Mick. <laughs> the picture. And Mick goes, what picture? And I go, the picture in her living room, the oil painting that I've looked at for 40 years. It's an oil painting. Now, this was probably purchased at one of those starving artist sales, and Anne probably paid $19 for it. But for years, I don't know why, when I went to Anne's house, I'd always see that picture, and I'd always admire it, and for some reason it brought me delight. I think maybe it was the association with family and everything else that a picture has. So now it hangs on our wall, and every time I, oh, by the way, if we didn't take it, it was going to the church garage sale. This hangs on our wall, and every time I look at it, I smile. Brings me some joy, some delight. Not worth much, and I don't own it. Anne didn't own it. When I die, when Mick and I die, if our kids don't want it, or if we haven't given it to somebody, one of our kids before then, if they don't want it, it's going into the garage sale pile. To be like this widow. Spirituality 101 would teach us the stuff we own is not ours. We are merely stewards. We're just hanging on to it. And we're to be good stewards. Find delight in it. But it is going to be passed on in some way or another. The second thing, in whom do we trust? Oh, well, by the way, if we're stewards of things too, we should be able to be generous with them. If we understand that God has given them to us, there's got to be some sense of generosity in our hearts. That's part of what keeps us healthier, more whole. A sense of generosity. In whom do you trust? At the core of this widow was the sense that she trusted Almighty God more than anything else, more than those two little coins. She trusted God. Now what would possibly bring a person to trust God so much that she knew it was all right. God would take care of us. A bishop, the Bishop of North Carolina, the North Carolina Synod of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. He tells this story about a, a dear African widow in his congregation when he was a pastor. He said, whenever I would visit, she would shuffle over to the drawer and produce an envelope full of one hundred one full of one dollar bills to, to send with me back to the church as her contribution, as her tithe. He says this. When once I suggested that she might keep a portion for her own needs, she'd sternly chastise me. Pastor, you know, this is the Lord's money. The first fruits always go to, the, to Christ's church. It's the Lord's money. Now, I've had the same experience visiting widows. There's something they know. Something that's a spiritual discipline. Something that's very religious about their money. The first fruits go to Christ's church.
Pastor Tim Smith, Bishop Tim Smith, continues. I took her out to get a gourmet burger, but when it came, she ate the fries and an order of hot peppers. But she had the burger boxed up for a treat she could savor at home that evening. On the way out of the restaurant, a homeless man on the curb called to her, Mama, pray for me. She walked over to him, laid her hands on him, prayed, and then asked him, when's the last time you ate? He said, yesterday morning. And she said, here, try this burger. When she died, she left a large percentage of her meager estate to the church. And then Bishop Smith says, as Mother Teresa often said, you'll never know that Jesus is all you need until Jesus is all you have. You'll never know that Jesus is all you need until Jesus is all you have. But what we can learn from this widow are those two things. We don't own our stuff. Be good stewards. Take care of it. The day is coming when you're just passing on. And if you don't do it while you're alive, someone will. The second thing is, God will take care of you, period. God will take care of you. Amen. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in the Father.
united into one by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray with all God's saints for healing, wholeness, and peace in all the earth. Generous God, you raise up the humble and poor, and you inspire us to generosity and love. Help us to be faithful stewards that we may reflect your loving compassion and grace throughout creation. Lord, in your mercy. Mercy. Creative God, you made heaven and earth. Move us to delight in the earth and care for it as you desire. Bless farmers and gardeners as they prepare for a new, preparing their fields for a new crop next year. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Enlighten world leaders and all in authority to forego the appearance of piety, the abuse of privilege, and the selfishness of power, that they may lift up those who are bowed down and work for peace and justice. We pray for the families of all those needlessly killed in the downing of a Russian passenger plane. We pray for the victims, families of the earthquake in northeast Afghanistan and Pakistan, as well as those providing disaster relief. We continue to pray for those affected by drought and floods, by fires and famine. Guide global economic and financial leaders and politicians. Embolden them to create financial policies that embody your justice. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Healing God, send your love to all who are bound by physical and mental chains. Grant healing and wholeness, especially to Katie Brady, Linda Brashear, Odella Arnold, Karen Cleave, Kite Coulter, Jeff Dykeman, Denny Hobein, April Hollinger, Larry Hopper, Jennifer Stillwell Jackson, Dustin Jones, Alan Kamens, Jim Lampy, Alan Malcolm, Katie Mayberry, Adam Mesenbrink, Roy Milligan, Lynn Peterson, Lori Pettit, John Reynolds, Amy Robb, Gary Sykes, Florence Stillwell, Kylie Timmerberg, Ann Wilbur, and Logan Young. Are there any others? God, your steadfast love is endless. Keep us faithful to you. We pray that you comfort those who mourn with the hope of the resurrection, especially the family and friends of Rick Allward, James Zimmer, and Bud McEwen. Lord, in your mercy. Into your care, oh, gracious. Gracious Father, as Veteran Day approach, we give special thanks for those who served our country. Be with our military personnel, those who return home, and those on active duty. Grant your help and healing that whatever their needs, they may be restored to their waiting families and resume their normal activities. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And to your care, Alpha and Omega, we entrust all for whom we pray. Be with us now and always, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. The Lord be he with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All is ready. Today we commune via intinctions where you will receive the bread or a wafer in your hand. Hold on to it until the chalice comes by and dip or intinct it into the wine. Our Lord invites us, please come. You may be seated.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. O oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. I'm going to encourage you to read your messenger, and I guess we have an announcement. Thank you. Just a couple of things. Um, please note your insert. Uh, Sarah asked me to draw your attention to the Pi Social. So it said there was a sign up sheet out there. I did not see it. We'll make sure there's a sign-out sheet, a sign-up sheet there next week, but we do need volunteers for setup and cleanup. Also, um, she asked me to announce that um, very soon you'll notice on the back of the um, I'm Here sheet that you will have the opportunity to request hymns that you would like to sing in church. You can start now by writing them in, but uh, worship and music will be starting that. So you can all have an opportunity to request your favorite hymn. I also want to remind you, and it was in the spirit this month, that this coming Saturday we will have a CPR and AED uh, renewal course. It's open to everyone. We'll be, we'll, we will be teaching the Heart Association Friends and Family course. It's not where there is a lengthy test, anything like that, but it's what you need to do to maintain somebody's livelihood until we can get EMS here. We would really like for all of the shepherds to attend if possible, but anybody is welcome. And then I noticed in the book, a messenger that it says the health ministry will meet tomorrow night. That is incorrect. We met last week, so that is an error. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Vicki. I actually saved somebody's life because I learned CPR when I was in the Boy Scouts. So that's a good course to take. Receive this, oh, by the way, the 22nd is our congregational meeting between worship services in the fellowship hall. Receive this benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace that sustains every breath we take. The love of God that gives us courage and strength and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit that fills our hearts with comfort and peace be with you and all those you care about now and forever. Amen.
Go in peace, live in love as Christ loved us.